So I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me and the great organization of the workshop. Um, so this talk is about function field, so x will be a curve, and f uh, the function field. Um, so for GLN, the Manningham conjecture is that uh, every cuspidal automorphic representation is tempered, and it's proved by Laurent Laforgue. Um, now for other groups, we know from the 70s that there are non-tempered automorphic representations um, which are still cuspidal. So there are, already for GSP4, there are two different constructions, Saito Kurokawa, Prof Piatesky Shapiro. Um, okay, and then in 1988, Arthur came with uh, Arthur conjectures and I want to focus on this particular one, which is that if uh, at one place uh, the component is in a supercuspidal L packet, then globally it should be tempered. So there have been already lots of talks about Arthur packets, and uh, also in the program last week. So. Uh, yeah. Well, we see. <laughs> so assume that G is split and characteristic not two. Yeah, we'll be, there'll be a slide about theta 10. Well, let's, let's wait one, one or two slides, we'll, we'll see, yeah. Um, so uh, we assume G is split and characteristic not two. Um, there are things to say if it's non, if it's, if, if it's non-split or non-quasi-split. Um, so yeah, I'll start immediately with the main panorama. Of, it's like one slide that summarizes most of things. So a few years ago with uh, Sarnak and Shin, we um, kind of gave a formulation of the cat Sarnak heuristics and also the Sato Tate conjecture for families. And there are two kinds of families, geometric families and harmonic families. And uh, what this is, is for geometric family, families, it's family version of the usual Sato Tate uh, equidistribution conjectures. And for harmonic families, uh, it's a family version of long glance conjecture about the, the lambda H group. Um, and the family version and the individual version, they are different, none implies each other. But what I want to talk about today is this uh, new thing that, in a nutshell, I want you to imagine the Arthur conjectures as analogs of, of the veil conjectures. So it's, it's why? Uh, well, at least two reasons. So one is Arthur himself and then many, many people uh, there is a connection with Shimoa varieties and, and especially the Lefschetz SL2 acting there. Um, another reason which is maybe a bit less um, clear but uh, which I, I like is that I like to view that neither Arthur nor Veil conjectures tell you right away what the, what the weights are. So for Arthur it means SL2 is a bit mysterious. And for Veil conjecture also, the, what the weights are is, is, is mysterious. Okay, and, and historically, so hard, I remind you that hard left sheds is proved by left sheds. <laughs> so amazingly in 1924. And uh, algebraic proof has been difficult to find, but it is due to the line um, as consequence of the Veil conjectures. Um, yeah, so now we have a new, um, Something new to say about a new kind of new definition in representation theory of reductive groups. So this will be the first beginning of the talk. I explain this definition. Um, so it works actually also over uh, mixed characteristic. Um, well, if you, if, you, if, you, if you yeah. So we call it MGS. It stands for monomial geometric uh, supercuspidal. Um, so monomial 
stands for induced from, from, from a character. Um, so we also allow some quotients. Uh, and geometric, uh, well, we mean many things. Uh, here it will mean that um, there is compatibility among our function fields. I have a ground field, which is typically with a finite field. I want the thing to be compatible with the ground field. So, so very soon you'll see some base change of the, of the ground field coming in. Or you can think about it as geometrically in terms of the construction has to have to be geometric. It's, it's, it's a little bit the same, actually. Um, and uh, in this specific situation, you can think about more process filtration, which has also lots of nice geometric properties. Okay, and also in a nutshell, this MGS, um, I like to think about it as analogs of, of discrete series, but more precisely of holomorphic discrete series for real groups. Okay, so that's like the two slide summary of the, of the talk. Um, yeah, and so the progress we want to, 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 to announce is that uh, if um, I strengthen the, the assumption that it's in an MGS packet, instead of a supercuspidal L packet, uh, then it should be tempered. Um, okay, and the theorem is split, in fact, in, in two parts. So the first part is posted, and uh, I want to state it this way. So suppose that for one place the representation is MGS, and suppose that base change is available for this representation pi, so from FQX to FQNX, then it's tempered. And, um, and then we also have work in progress to, well, to, to, to verify base change. Uh, so if, if it belongs to an MGS packet, then it should be based, there should exist a base change. So. Okay, so I, I all use a defini rigorous definition of MGS. So let, let's go through this uh, immediately. Um, so we came to this a bit backward. I mean, we, we had an idea of what to do, and then we, we think, what do we need for the kind of method to work? And then this, this kind of isolated this class of, of representation. But uh, so what we so this monomial condition. So when I say compact induction, we're going to compact induce from a character. So we have definitely a, a one-dimensional character of a, um, open compact mode center subgroup. We call it J. Um, so for, for temperedness, uh, residual spectrum, of course, is, 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 is bad. So we want to be away. So supercuspidal is, is better for our situation. And so we want vanishing Jacquet modules. And uh, well, it turns out that for compactly induced representation, it's you can check this kind of sort of geometrically. This Jacquet modules are such. Um, right, and so geometric, I've already told you what roughly this means, this, this constant field extensions. So let's be a bit more formal. So the, the, uh, what I exactly need is a character shift. So the character, I want to upgrade into a character shift. So if you, if you haven't seen the definition, it's a rank one shift, such that instead of saying chi x y equals chi x times chi y, when you upgrade into a shift, you say the, the exterior product is isomorphic to the pullback by multiplication. Uh, and so the consequence is that for any uh, field, when you specialize to, to a, a genuine group, when you get an actual character, uh, maybe L addict, but you can fix an isomorphism with C if you want. Um, yes. And so now we so, okay. So now we put things together. So we need uh, a subgroup H. We need a shift L on it. Um, so it has to make sense for the subgroup to, so to be some kind of algebraic. So we we, we say it's a, it's a, say a subgroup of the say the R group. Or if you if you don't want to have infinite dimensional things, you truncate. That's what we do in the paper, actually. Um, 
And then, so, okay, very important, we need this uh, furnishing of Jacquet modules condition. And, uh, well, the thing is that it can be made, uh, it can be translated into a property of the shift. It's the fact that the restriction of the shift to every intersection with a, with a unipotent is, is geometrically non-trivial. Um, okay, and there is a translation of this definition into something more classical, and in fact, uh, it, it's equivalent. So it's equivalent to exactly this. Uh, for every integer n, when you do the compact induction, it has a vanishing Jacquet module for every proper parabolic subgroup of G, F, Q, n. So it may not be irreducible, so that's why I don't say supercuspidal, but in some references, it's called supercuspidal. Um, uh, but, but definitely, it's a direct sum of irreducible supercuspidals. So, so, so that's, that's, that's the MGS uh, condition that we need. Ah, yes, the theta 10 that uh, came up immediately. So, well, maybe the, I hope this answers the question that unipotent representations are not MGS. And the, the, so the, the example of Hoff Piatesky Shapiro for SP4. Um, is excluded from the definition of MGS. And uh, well, I'll give you a general reason why is because whenever you, these things are constructed from a finite group, like maybe from dolin lustich theory, and they're induced from non-split theory on a finite group, FQ. But then if you, do, if you go from FQ to FQ to the N, the, tor the, 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 the torus will, will split. And it, it's part of the classical, maybe Steinberg uh, theorem. And, and, and so automatically all, all these Dolin-Lustich the representations are, are excluded. Um, yes, and uh, okay, so I also give you a list of things which are MGS, so, so that's it. Um, so for, for GLN, there is a bushnell kutzko uh, theory of, 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 of types, and uh, if you're widely ramified, so, the, 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 yeah, so if you're widely ramified, so the, the, the P divide, yeah, so N is the power of P, and so, so th then you, 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 you can check your compact induce from a character. It's a, well, all, in for GLN, all representations, they have, they have a cuspidal type, and for, for the widely, for the widely supercuspidal, there is a, this type. Um, the, the, the simple supercuspidal and epipelagic that's been constructed in the last decade, um, well, they are exactly geometric of nature, and they, and they are MGS. Uh, now, Adler's construction, um, also produce MGS as soon as, soon as uh, when you induce from, the, from, from, a, from a torus, the torus has to remain um, elliptic. So, so you start from a totally ramified maximal torus. And uh, more, so much more generally, there is use construction. And uh, we saw Kalita stock uh, a few days ago on regular supercuspidals. Um, so some of these are also MGS. And essentially what you need is, you need the use construction to not have this depth zero, because I just talked about avoiding the lean lustish. And you don't want the vile representation also. Uh, because vile representation is, 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 is not of this, of this. And, and, yeah, and recently, uh, Finson has improved the exhaustion property of use construction. And uh, so if P does not divide the, the vile group, it's it's a good situation already for the tame case. Um, but this includes some tame representation and also some wild. Uh, yeah, so I think I stated the main ingredients for the theorem. So does it make sense to everybody? So, Um, <laughs> yes, it was a very good catch. Um, 
So uh, yeah, just need <laughs> yeah, just need infinitely many in, in the argument you'll see in the end of the book. But, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, 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 so I want to plan so we don't get lost. So I usually get lost in my talks. So okay, part one is done. So now I explain, I'm going to explain the uh, previous results because uh, that's an important, uh, there have been many, many, many works on this. And um, exp uh -huh. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, fact, next slide, I'm going to say something about this, yes. Sure, yeah, right, I mean, it's part of, yeah, yes, that's definitely true, and, but it, yeah, I'm going to say something next slide. Uh, so for GLN, yeah, so I said there is a, it's known for by Laurent Laforgue, but we can look a little bit about details of different proofs, so Laurent Laforgue used two cast. And that's extended Dreenfeld's proof for GL2. Um, but um, a little bit before Lomont in, in his books uh, had also a, an argument using um, Dreenfeld's first proof, but then there is a cohomological condition at one place to be able to use uh, the Dreenfeld um, elliptic modules. Uh, and so I'm not going to insist too much on GLN because it, 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 it's already, things are already better. But our approach gives a, yet another way to, to approach and, and, and the, the question. And we don't use elliptic modules or Stukas. The, the moduli space is, is bungee. It's just bungee. Um, and so so it's, it's, it's a bit closer to, to things like what people do in geometric long lines. And for GLN, of course, we have also this condition MGS at one, at one place. Um, Okay, so, so recently, yes, there is important work of uh, Lomeli. So his, his theorem is that if it's generic cuspidol and, 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 and G is quasi-split quasi classical group, then it's tempered at every magnified place. And this confirms the conjecture of Shaidi. Um, so another work is uh, Vincent Laforgue, who, um, constructed these um, higher excursion operators. And so let me highlight, so this exactly answer uh, Shaidi's question. Uh, one, one consequence exactly of, of, of his very deep theorem is actually this. If, if, if your, um, if there is at least one place such that the, 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 the local parameter is elliptic, then it's uh, tempered. Uh, yeah, and so the answer to, to your question is not actually on the slide, it was in my mind, but I didn't put it. So it's, it's that, it, it, yeah, it's almost there, but what he proved also is that the consequence of what he proved is that if it's temp tempered at one unramified place, then it's tempered at all the others, which is expected from, Shai, from Arthur's conjecture and so on. So, yeah, 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 much more, I mean, Arthur tells you that there is a globus LCL2 which controls everything. And uh, yeah, this follows already from, from Vincent Lafogg's work. Um, yeah, and hopefully Arthur's endoscopic classification will be available for function fields one, one day, and then, then, then the con Arthur's conjecture will be known for classical groups when it's done, because it because it's it's, it's, it reduces everything to GLN for which it's known. For, for function, yeah, function fields, yeah. Function. Um, yeah, let me remind you briefly, yeah, the combinatorics of the S Arthur SL2 and why uh, things are expected to work this way. So globally, let me, WF is a global Val group. Then I have a local Val group. Then I have the inertia group. Um, and so there is a big tower of, 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 of sub and sub and sub subgroups. So, so the, big, the, the biggest is, is, is WF times SL2. And then you can restrict and restrict. And the parameter is elliptic. Um, yeah, we saw the definition when the image is not in a proper parabolic. Um, yeah, and tempered, in terms of parameters, this means there is no SL2, so. 
And um, yeah, so by definition, uh, well, if you're elliptic on the small piece, you're elliptic on bigger and bigger piece. So, so this, this implication are, are by definition or obvious or clear. Um, now, if you want to go to the automorphic side, you start from a, from a pi, like in Arthur's situation. Um, well, we believe that if it's MGS, then the local parameter is elliptic. So in fact, not, not just on W, but also on inertia, because when you, uh, I'm going to talk about base change soon, but uh, base change on the Galois side correspond to exactly um, this, this, this the Frobenius restriction, so you kill Frobenius, and so you have to be elliptic on the inertia part. But, um, so there is a question mark here because uh, that's not at all known. But if it, if it were known, then that's, that's kind of explain, so that, that, yeah, so that, that's kind of a Arthur conjecture from 1988 somehow. That if you're in supercuspidal L packet and, and, and even stronger MGS, then you have ellipticity, then ellipticity of, of psi and then temper. Um, so that's, that's kind of the situation. Uh, yeah. So now I'm going to explain the, the proof. So, yeah, so for this one, we assume base change. And, um, and that is MGS at one place. And now we want to prove temperness. Um, yeah, so let me explain what we use. So, um, yeah, so maybe first here. Um, so I said what we use is bungee. We're also going to use ideas from trace formula and, um, and some, some, some construction in terms of shifts. So, so in more details, um, the, 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 the very first step is to embed, the, the, you, you have your representation pi, you embed in, in, in a family. So yeah, I've talked a few times, I mean, about families. Um, but in, in this situation, what, what, the way you can think about it, you have your, your favorite pi you want to study. And you kind of deform it into its, na into its neighbors. It's, 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 you, you can take it as a naive, the most naive possible uh, definition. So what it means is you, you, your, your pi is ramified at some places and has some complicated ramification behavior. You look at the other pies which looks the same at almost all places, but at some places it might differ, finitely many places. And um, so formally, um, it looks like this. Um, you, you fix your ramified places, and then you fix a level, and you consider only the representation with that level. Um, and then at the place U, you have this MGS condition, and what you do, in fact, you again impose this MGS condition for every member of, of V, of the family V. Um, yeah, and the definition of MGS was made so that this works. So this works over GF mod GA. But so far, GF mod GA is just a fixed sink. So pi is also fixed. This was fixed. And V is a sickening of pi somehow. It's also fixed. But now I want a little bit of movement, if you want. That's why it's called a family, because something is going to grow or move. So, so here, what's growing is a FQ to the N. With N, QN is going to get bigger. So I, I need to make myself a little bit of room, and, and so it's ma so here that's exactly what I can do. I can make the same definition, but over fq to the n for, for every n. Uh, 
Um, and then this finite set is going to grow with n. So, okay, so any question about the family definition? A bit informal, but uh, this really captures the main idea. Um, yeah, now I can r run through all the steps of the proof, basically. So step one is this picture. Step two is to, con so to, the, to the trace formula. You construct the automorphic kernel. So sum of f, x inverse, gamma, y, y. And, and, and the key, key theorem is that the shift that you get in this way is, is pure, perverse pure. So I'll come back to this step, uh, it's, it's a crucial step. Um, then you look at the spectral side of your trace formula, and what it gives you is that the average of the recuperators is bounded by something. So something a bit mysterious is a cohomology group, but it's, it's bounded by, by something. And the something, what's very important is that it's independent of n. So that's where, the, I mean, you can take geometric as different meanings, but for, for, for this purpose, geometric means independent of n. In some sense, that, that's what etal cohomology buys you. It gives you things which are independent of n. Okay, and, and then, you, so what you extract is this inequality. Um, okay, and then here, base change is critical because I did my construction over fq, then over fqn to uh, fqn, but, well, I'm interested in pi, and maybe I've lost pi when I do this. I mean, where, where, where did pi go when I go to fq to the n? And I need a I need little bit of control on this. And, or, and, 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 and this is exactly what some form of, 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 of base change uh, will give me. So my pi will still exist in fqn, typically. Yeah, and then, okay, you do some inequalities, and, and this gives you exactly uh, Ramanujan. Namely, the recuperator is less than, than what it should be. Um, yeah, so okay, one technical comment a little bit about inequality, but maybe I'll, I'll go quickly. Um, well, in this, here I use unitary normalization so that it's clear who is bigger than what. And this, this bound is like average Ramanujan. Namely, this is a bound for the number of automorphic forms, and then you do some kind of average. So it is in use, the recurrent value is small on average. And it's critical to have this um, purity here, because you could run the same argument by skipping the step two. I mean, nothing prevents you to do that. Uh, but what you get is, um, Something worse because this 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 dimension or the, the, the well the, the 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 trace formula is huge and if you count everything, you, what you get is you count Bura cells, and and but it's, it's a nice calculation it's a good exercise to do but at the end what you exactly get is a bound for unitary dual of Jacques Shalaika or Borel Wallach for general group, so you get exactly not what you want if you don't input something. So, <laughs> so that's, yeah. yeah. I like this kind of exercise to, to give you exactly why you, you need to do a bit more. Um, okay, and at the end there is a bit of n tends to infinity. Oh yeah, so, so okay. So now I want to explain the main, yeah, where, where did this argument came from? Well, it came from this, uh, well-known gem of the 20th century, uh, Delin's proof in, um, in seven, 1974. And so, yeah, it's, it was a gem and it's still fresh nowadays as it was, I found, in 1974, perhaps. Uh, so uh, let me go through the, 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 the wonderful proof again. So start from a projective hypersurface. First step is to deform X into a family of hypersurface, maybe take all of them. Um, 
So next, it's not absolutely necessary, but it's reassuring to restrict to a left set uh, pencil to have a one-dimensional deformation because then you have only one-dimensional deformation of the of the variety. Um, then there is Grothendieck base change, which tells you that um, well, several things, but in particular that there is an action of monodromy and, 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 and cohomology. And, uh, and so Dolin proves that the monodromy is big. So in the, in the symplectic group. So it's, it's uh, image as finite uh, index. Well, open, open image. Um, and then the next step is to use um, some non-negativity argument for, 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 for L functions, which go back. So in Dolin's paper, he, he was in, inspired by Rankin. But it also goes back, in fact, to Lando and also Chebyshev when he proved approximation of prime number theorem. That's so that that is um, classical inequalities. And then you have a bound for, for, for the for the for eigenvalues. And now you now the last step is to refine these bounds. So in fact, you redo the argument not for x, but for x to the m. So x times x times x many times. Um, and you also do the tensor product n times of this cohomology, so you get something big. Um, and then you do the limit n tends to infinity, m tends to infinity. And to execute the n tends to infinity limit, so there is a nice uh, fact, but you have to do something I mean, about symplectic group. And there is something which goes back to, I mean, he cites Eman Weil in, his, in, in, his, in the 74 paper about the invariance of symplectic group in tensor product representation. And QNET formula, and then that's a proof. And it, so it gives you purity for all hypersurfaces simultaneously. You, you're interested in one, but then you, 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 prove, you prove for everything. So something. If you want to do analogous to this, it's this. And then, well, if you use your imagination, or maybe you came late, and you didn't realize that I switched a little bit to algebraic geometry, uh, and you, 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 you put the words, you, you, you make automorphic everywhere. Well, it, it looks a bit like a proof before. I mean, there is base change. Uh, there is notion of family. Uh, there is uh, this, this, this limits. And... Uh, yeah, so that, 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 that's kind of the, the key idea. So the key idea is, is not to use only uh, veil, the, the, the veils, it is to use a proof, the method of proof, and, and, and to, to, to reconstruct the step on the automorphic side. Um, and so in fact, we, we never go to the Galois side. So, um, so previously I mentioned all, all this Arthur SL2, the parameters. We never touch the parameters. Yeah, so that's, that's what I said. Um, we kind of transport the proof from, from algebraic families to, to harmonic or automorphic families. Um, yeah, whereas before, where, where, what usually proof of, of Romanian in, 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 in the cases where it was established is to reduce to Galois representation and then apply the limit. Um, yeah, so if, if you want to be a bit more precise with the analogy, the, okay, the limit step is a bit closer to bombieri stepanov proof. Um, if I have time, I'll explain at the end. Um, yes, and so I introduced family, and I want to say a bit more about how to think about families. So if you, if you, if you want to work on and try to prove more results, because... Um, there is a way to think about families which guide you about what to do. Um, so this V is not at all defined by algebraic equation. It's defined by prescribed local behavior. Um, but surprisingly, you can think about it a bit like if it's an algebraic variety. And so let me explain why. Um, so the first thing is I already mentioned, the base change. And that's why I write it V, a bit suggestive. I write V of FQN, um, which implicitly means 
based change is available, there is a way to, to go from FQ to FQ to the N. So for algebraic varieties, you don't even mention that because a, F, I mean, a FQ point is also a FQN point. So in, in algebraic geometry, the, the first step is not even mentioned. Uh, so, secondly, there is Dreenfeld's formula, um, which tells you that the, the, the size of the, of, of, of the number of automorphic form is, is an alternating sum of veil numbers. And so it, it, it looks, again, like algebraic variety. Uh, yeah, so I mentioned base change, and then, then, but then you can continue. If you don't, we don't just want to count, we want to do Heike eigenvalues. And so you can think about it, it is a little bit like a shift on, on V. And then what's average Ramanujan? Um, it's vanishing of this kind of Heike shift. And then again, there is tensor power trick, it, it's, it's kind of the same. And the monodromy of this family, when well, you get back the Sato Tate conjecture for family I mentioned at the beginning. And you can even continue a bit more, Katsana heuristics, and maybe in the future, uh, mirror symmetry. Um, but there is, the main point is, is there is this analogy which guides you, and surprisingly, it guides you pretty far. Um, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I told you about the proof, and, um, I have a few slides about the technical details of the geometric construction. Uh, I think I'll go quickly on it. You may prefer to look at the paper uh, in a quiet room or, uh, than looking at, staring at slides with lots of notations. Um, but it, it, since there are some experts here on, on bungee and geometry, so. Um, well, so we do this compact induction. Then there is this classical test function in the trace form. This is a classical setup. And then we, we need to geometrize uh, everything. So echo operators, we call it W. And then, so the key thing is probably this object here. How do you geometrize the, the, the kernel of the trace formula? is sort of the diagonal. So you have bun, and you embed diagonally in bun cross bun. And so the, the novelty here so is that we have this MGS condition, and in fact, it enables you to twist the diagonal exactly by this H. So it's a bit hard to convey in a, I want to draw tons of commutative diagram, but uh, like if I want to draw one row, it, this one is the, the key that there is a diagonal perturbed by H, and H has this uh, Jacquet module vanishing condition in, in, in it, and th th this is absolutely critical to give you all the, all the nice properties. So, um, and the, all the nice properties, exactly this one. So the, the sh yeah, yesterday we saw in Paul Mezzo talk the, uh, the, 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 the shriek and the star, and uh, Purity follows from when the shriek is equal to the star, which in words means there is nothing at infinity. And the nothing at infinity, also from a classical automorphic viewpoint, meaning means that there is no Eisenstein series, basically. And that's exactly what the H does. It twists and removes all the, all, the, all the Eisenstein series, but, but, but in a geometric way. So then you can, you can, you can, you can say this. Okay, and then, yeah, so that's the same thing. But yeah, there is something I want to mention because there is interesting previous work and Wang was, uh, gave a talk last week uh, here. So I think you've, you've heard him. And so about his work with Dreamfeld for, and um, also there is a work of Simon Sh uh, Schieder. And he also con considered exactly the map from the, from, from the diagonal, bun to bun cross bun, and it exactly takes uh, the, the shriek and the star. And uh, if you remember his talk and his papers also, uh, the key thing is that they differ in that situation exactly because there is no twist. And also he explained in his talk that 
everything comes from the Eisenstein series. So he did a very detailed calculation for SL2 and then general group about what it does for Eisenstein series. And yeah, so there, there is a relation to that. Okay. Yeah, so okay, some more technical slides. Um, yeah, so I also want to say a few more about the thinking preparation about the base change. Um, so here we use a classical uh, method, which goes back to uh, all these people, uh, and more, and many, many more. Uh, and uh, well, here the challenge is to adapt our function fields. Um, well, this challenge has been around for, for, for a long time. Uh, so, I remind you, oh yeah, okay, first, yeah, what's an, so here I need a bit strong, I need a stronger condition, I need, I want to have a packet, because I want to do some endoscopy, and so what packet means is what you, what, what, what you know, that you have um, stable orbital integrals. So here I, yeah, so we, um, so also, it's not directly needed, but it's, it's very, very important. Is do, how do you construct an MGS packet? And, um, um, well, so there is also lots of work on this, and I want to especially highlight um, the work of, of, of Kaleta. Uh, so he gave a talk actually on supercuspidal L packets. And uh, so the character formulas of, of Adler Spice, and so there, is, there have been lots of progress on this. Um, so, um, okay, so the preliminary form of, of what we want to prove. Uh, so yeah, so what's exactly about base change that we need? Since we thicken the, the, the pie a little bit, what we, what we need is to control the ramification, essentially. We, 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 at, at, at the places where you have ramification, we need to know that the ramification doesn't change much. Um, and actually, there, there has been a talk last week also in the program, so the organizer did about this, because it's, it's kind of related to depth preservation somehow. But it's, it's a, it's a, we need very, a tiny bit of, of depth preservation, uh, an equality, which is, which is that the, well, the, 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 the transfer, the, in the transfer, the, the, the conductor will not increase dramatically with n. Um, yes, and um, yeah. So, which stress formula? Uh, do we need that's uh, very important, of course. So since we are in the supercuspidal situation, we can do a simple choice formula. But now there are some, what simple choice formula means, what simple means, uh, there are different versions. And uh, um, the Dulling cash down version is like the simplest, simpler, simple, simple choice formula. But it's kind of too simple somehow for, for our purpose. And, uh, I would say the, what, what the Arthur version, the Arthur cohomological version, and maybe a, we need something in bet, between two and three somehow um, of, of, of cohomological choice. So, uh, yes. Um, and so in the 90s, uh, work, and work of Labes is, is, of course, very, very relevant to this. Um, yeah, so. Well, this is, um, so we need to pre-stabilize and, and so on. So, but I want to highlight one thing in our situation which, which is nice, is that Kotwitz proves the, um, the matching of unit elements in the recall algebra. So fundamental element for unit elements for, for, for base change uh, in, in 86. And so, so, so it's well, this, this, this paper is, is very well known. Um, the result is, is very, very important. Um, but what's a bit intriguing about that paper is that it proved more. And I think um, 
He proved not only the, the fundamental map, but he also proved matching of single elements. And uh, it's a bit, it was a bit surprising, and still is. But in fact, for us, it's, it's very good news, because when we want to, 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 to do MGS and prove, prove the transfer of MGS, well, we can exactly use a strong version of the proof of code bits and sync uh, transfer. Um, so I've been thinking about it, and I think now it kind of makes sense of why things should, 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 should work this way. So that, that's kind of a good, good news for, for our situation, if you want. Uh, yes, and that's pretty much all. So I'm almost done. Um, and that's kind of sketch of the proof of the the thing in progress. Yeah, and so, yeah, so I put a reminder here, so what are these letters? So that's name of people. So there, there is other influence in this work which influences us to, to do this construction. So I focused here on Dolin's proof of, of veil because I think it's uh, the most clear. Um, but I think I have one slide about this. Oh yeah, right. So the G, H, and Y, so that's the Gross, uh, Jörg Einloss, and Baucho and Go, and Yun Wei. Um, there are this, this paper about function fields uh, for simple supercuspidal and the clusterman uh, shifts. So th that, that was a, a big, inspir uh, important inspiration. Um, and uh, yeah, so M and B are uh, Mich Philippe Michel and uh, Enrico Bombieri, so my uh, PhD advisor and postdoc uh, mentor. Uh, because, yeah, so I mentioned the Bombieri Stepan of proof of, um, and that's exactly the simplification of, of the family. So, so, so the idea of using families in this way is, 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 is well, I've learned from, from them definitely. And K is Nick Katz because um, I don't have time to explain it, it's, it's a whole story, but the in these wonderful for full books, there are many, many equidistribution and, and very, very strong results. And in, in, in the last, latest book, he has, in fact, deep results about GL1. Um, and, um, and in some sense, that's kind of generation going from GL1, again, with some imagination, and replaces by Bungie. Uh, actually, in Bloomer's talk in the that's how he started the talk, also by mentioning reciprocity for GL1 and then imagining reciprocity for, uh, for this. And so here, the work of, 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 of Nick Katz also was a big inspiration about how to navigate the, the difficulty. Um, yeah, and uh, okay, I think this is it. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, if, if I, is, is that a yeah, we, we have, a, we have a, a result about this. So, uh, I wanted to, to show in too many results. But, uh, so let me remind you the kind of statement that's going on here. So when you count the number of automorphic forms here, it looks like a count of algebraic variety, which means it's a sum of plus minus sign of alpha i to the e. So for every n less than one. Uh, yeah, and so it comes from the spectral side of the trace formula. So if you, if you we, we have constructed this, 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 this thing as a shift. And uh, if you take the trace function, uh, this comes, so it, it comes from, um, from from the left shed, Grothenig left shed trace formula in our situation. Um, and um, yeah, so I know you have a, a student who just defended 
and who is uh, right here, <laughs> who did uh, the case, very important case of, of GLN unramified. Um, and uh, so extending uh, Dreenfeld proof for GL2 to GLN, dealing with all the terms in the trace formula. Uh, so here we, we, we don't have the, so the difficult part in, in, in your work was the Eisenstein series. And, but, but here we, we have, the main theorem was removing the Eisenstein series. So then we can, we can prove it as consequence. So it's, it's uh, yeah, in that situation, it's, it's none. What are there? Uh, yeah, but there are some, some gross and dick left sheds. Ask gross and dick left sheds. Uh, yeah. It's more, more, more comological, yes. It's more common. Ben, oui, c'est le. Là, on prend le faisceau et, et puis on le. Ouais, ouais. On le. Ouais, on. Euh, ouais. Ouais. Ouais, so, yeah, uh, very, very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As always. Uh, I'm just wondering whether you can uh, relax some local condition on the MGS. Ah, okay. Yeah, which one? I asked you a question during your talk, but I mean, how do we matter with all the every end versus the Yeah, yeah, yeah. 